Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about algorithms. So, what is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of instructions used for solving a problem. So, we use algorithms in computer science, but also we as humans use algorithms. For example, <clears throat> if you say to your friend, oh, if the weather is good, we're going to uh, the lake, but if it's raining, we're going to the cinema. That already is an algorithm. You found a set of rules to determine uh, what you're going to do. So you have an input, which is in this case the weather, and your algorithm produces a result. Or when you do a puzzle, for example. So what you would usually do is you start with the corners and the edges and maybe if it's a big puzzle you're going to sort the pieces by color. So that is an algorithm that you develop to solve this puzzle. And when we want uh, the computer to solve a problem for us, we need to think of an algorithm first and then write down a set of rules and procedures for, so that the computer can solve the problem for us. So essentially we develop a system of instructions that the computer is able to execute and then provide us with some kind of output. And now let's take a look at some of the classical algorithms that we use in computer science. So the first thing we're going to look at is the if statement. So every if statement has a condition. And the condition you can think of like a question. So, for example, is x bigger than 5? Or is the roof green? Or, <laughs> I don't know, any question that you could answer with yes or no. And then depending whether um, the condition is true or not, you get the the then result or the else result. So if we say if x is bigger than 5 then you would get uh, this result or if not then for every result that is not true to that condition you get the else value. And then we're already at the end of the if loop and in C sharp this looks like this. You write if and then your condition and then the, the then statement, so exactly so what you want to the computer to do. So for example, if this is true, then print out um, your calculations succeeded or print out the result is blah, blah, blah. Else, and then the else statement. So if it's not true, then print out you got an error or start all over or I don't know. Okay, but now let's try that out with a practical example. So in Germany, we have this rule that when a building is higher than seven meters, it needs some special uh, fire safety measures. So we are going to write a code in C sharp and use the if statement to determine whether or not we need special fire regulations. So we open oops, a new project. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we're going to use just the basic C Sharp console application. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to ask the user how tall the building is. And then we're going to tell him whether um, he needs special fire regulations or not. So first we're going to ask the computer. So instead of this hello world statement, we're going to type in... Um, what is the height of the building? And then we're going to read in the result. But as you remember, whatever the user types in comes out as a string. So we will need a string. And let's call it input. And um, the value of that string will be the console read lines, so what the user types in, after we ask the question. And now we need to, so to do the calculations, we will need a, a number type. So we need to convert those, this string 
into a double. So let's call it height is the convert to double of input. Okay, so far so good. And now comes the part with where we start the if statement. So first we type in if, and now we need the condition. So the condition in this case is if the height is bigger than seven meters, we want the oops, computer to say and that we will need uh, special fire safety measurements uh, measures okay mm. special fire safety measures required oh i just remembered that somebody asked me to increase the font size a little so it's easier to read when you watch the video so i hope that is better okay so if height is bigger than seven the console will print out special fire safety measures required okay so we determine that statement and then else so for everything below seven or equal seven, the we want to say no special safety measures required. Okay. And that is it. <laughs> So we can start the program and as we see here it prints out the, um, the sentence that we told him to write in the first line and then now here it ev evades a statement, uh, a, an input from us so we let's say in this case the building is 4, enter and we get as a return no special safety measures required. Now, just to see that it works, we can do that again with um, a taller building. So let's say 11 meters, and then it says special fire safety measures required. So that is what a basic if command looks like. And then the second algorithm that I want to show you is the for loop. Now we use for loops to when we want to repeat stuff. So just like the if statement, the for loop also has a condition that can be either true or false. And now, as long as this condition is true, we're going to keep repeating the instructions that we give the for loop. So for example, if this can be helpful when you're searching through a data set and um, you're looking for a specific number or value and you say uh, for example if you're looking for the value 65 okay so you say um, as long as the number that I'm currently looking at is not 65 then please go to the next number and then if that is still not 65 then you go to the next number again until the statement is false, so in this case your statement was it is supposed to not be 65, so when it is 65 we'll break the loop and we we are stuck with the item that we were looking for. <laughs> and code-wise this would look like this, so we have the for statement and then in those brackets we define the condition that the for statement follows um, so for that we need an initializer, a condition and an iterator and after that follows the, the body. So this is the instructions that I talked about earlier. Um, but I think this will be all what all of those three are will be much 
um, clearer when we do a practical example. So let's go back to our code. Okay, so let's start with a very simple for loop, which would be we just want it, we want the computer to count from 1 to 10. So we would say 4, and then we need a variable to keep track. And in most cases, we can use an integer for that, and then we will call it i. And in the beginning, we're going to set i to 0, because we want to count from 0 to 10. So we say as long as i is smaller than 11, because we want it to count from 0 to 10, so we want it to stop as soon as it reaches 11, and then we need also the iterator, as I said before. And this is basically the step size that you want to take with each loop. So we say for each loop, please add one to zero, uh, add one to i. <laughs> so i will become higher every time you execute the loop. And then we want it to write out the value of i. So when we start this now, you will see that... Okay, now this was a very simple for loop, but we could also combine the for loop and the if statement from before to solve this... Uh, fire safety problem. So for example, if we now say we have a list of house heights, so you use this symbol to create an array of doubles. So just say we name this house list. And uh, then we would have one house that has the height of 10 meters and then one with Six, uh, four point six, and then seven and twenty-two. Okay, so we create a, um, so let's say we have a portfolio of houses, and uh, we input all the heights that we that each of the houses has to store it in this array called house list. So just and let's enter a couple more. Oops. And 30. Okay. So now we created this, this list of heights of the, our houses. And then we use a for loop to go through all of those houses. So we say from e to 0 to e is smaller than the... Oops. length of this list so the length is how many values are stored in this so in this case it would be one two three four five six seven so we want the for loop to go seven times around so but if the length of this house varies so if we add another house to our portfolio then this um, value here the length would also adapt to it. So this is why we don't write seven or eight, but we but we write we use this house list length parameter to do it. Okay, and then oh this should be and then we count up. And then in the body we use an if statement to determine whether the item in the list that we're currently looking at is over or under the the seven meter mark. So if the house list oh, element e, so the e element. So if e is zero, then it's the first element, and then the second and the third as we go up to the house list. So this is an, also an important thing. We start counting in C-sharp, we start counting with zero. So 
the the first element is the zero element in in C sharp. Okay, so when we look at the eth element, so first zero and then we count up element, we ask we want to know if it is higher than seven meters, because then we are going to print print out. And so right line house number E and needs special oops fire safety measures. Okay. And else just do nothing. Just go up one higher. Okay, so once we execute that, the computer will output us what all the houses that need special fire measures. So if we compare that to the list that we have here, so house 10, uh, the first house is needs special, then the third, so 0, 1, 2, 3, yes. So it jumps over the 7 because we didn't say equal or more, we said more than 7. So the 7 will not need special fire safety measures. And then 4, 5, 6, 7, so those last ones as well. So that is one way to combine and use for loops and if statements. So I hope you liked this episode. I'm sorry if it was a bit shorter than the previous two, but I am a bit busy at the moment. I am moving to another city and I'm traveling. I am, in fact, when you're watching this, I will already be in Namibia in Africa. I'm traveling there with my family. And um, so at the moment I am like packing and everything. So, oh, if you want to follow me on my my travels make sure to check out my instagram i'm sure i'll post some cool animal pictures there and then i'll see you when i get back bye bye